Hey, it's Lucky. I wanted to make a quick start guide for Godot 4.0 stable. I'm going to show you how to set up this scene with the first person controller, new global illumination, which reflects light. So you can see light bounces off the orange here, hits the wall here. Uh, also going to be setting up the fog and I'm going to be showing you how to do the depth of field uh, blurring, which they changed in 4.0. All right, let's get into it. Quickly close out this. Uh, for this project, I'm going to be using these grid textures from Kenny. Awesome free asset. I'll link it below. So just download this, open up the zip, take out just the PNG fact, uh, folder, drop it on my desktop, and I'm going to rename it to grids. All right, don't need that anymore. Open up Godot 4.0, create a new project. I'll just drop it on my desktop. Create a folder, FPS, select the current folder, call it FPS is fine, create and edit. So the first thing we're gonna do is set up the floor and the archway. So right here in the top left, create a new 3D scene, double click to rename it, I'll name it world, right click, Add child mode and search for box. Use this one, the 3D box, and click create. This is gonna be our floor. So in the top right, we'll set it to 1000 meters by one meter by 1000 meters. And down here in the transform, we're gonna move it down. So on the Y, minus 0 0.5. You can see it's on the world origin now. You can still see the grid, so that's nice. Uh, next up, we're gonna add the grid to this. So I'll drag and drop my grids folder into the file system. Uh, open it up and I used the number, let me check real quick, four. So we'll drag and drop number four onto the plane and you can see it's giant, it's not good. So we'll go into it here, uh, into the box, I mean on the top left, go down to geometry, material override, click the ball, go down to UV1 and enable triplanar. Now we got this nice grid, every square is one meter by one meter, perfect. Next, let's create the archway. I'll first rename this one to floor, by double clicking it and right click the world, add child mode, and we'll create another box. Create. I'm going to be making this one four by four by four, again in the top right in size. And in geometry, I'm going to move it up. Oh, I'm sorry, in uh, transform, I'm going to move it up 2.5 oh, two meters. As you can see now, it's right on the origin. That's what we want. Nice. All right, for the archway, we're gonna be using a combiner node. This allows you to uh, combine boxes and other shapes into one final shape. So we'll add a child node, search for combiner. It's right here, create. And we're gonna call this one arch and drop in the box from four by four. Perfect. Now we're gonna click the box here and go Control D to duplicate it. And in operation here in the shape 3D, we're gonna change this to subtraction. Uh, this way it's gonna remove the box from the other box. And right now they're the same size, so there's nothing there. But we're gonna grab this little red ball, hold down Control and drag it in one, and then grab the top one drag it in one and then grab the arrow and grab it down or slide it down. So now we've got this archway. And we're also gonna be adding uh, a cylinder. So just search for cylinder right there. And this one is also gonna be subtraction here in the shape. Rotate this one, rotate this one to 90. And we're gonna scale this one up to be one meter in radius 
and four meters in height. And then we're gonna hold down control and drag it up. So it's on the box, uh, on the top of this box. And I'm actually gonna set the sides to 32 to make it a little more high res. And now this problem happens a lot in the combiner. You can see it's removing this triangle here and we don't want that. You can very easily remove that by dragging it down just a little bit. You see? I'm also gonna be dragging the box down just a little bit to keep this glitchy bottom from appearing. There we go. Oh, I scaled it up actually. There we go. Now there's again a glitch here. You can see there's a triangle appearing in the front. We don't want this. So again, I'm gonna go into cylinder and drag it out a little bit. Ooh. Ooh. All right, I'm just gonna make the height a little bit more. Five. Beautiful. It's looking like a nice archway. Next, we're gonna give this one uh, a grid material as well. So I'm actually gonna create a material for this because we're gonna apply it to all of them. It's just easier. So left click in the file system, new resource, material, and we'll add a standard material right here. Create, I'll call this orange grid. In the top left in the albedo, I'm gonna drag in my orange nine texture right there and i'm also going to enable triplanar in uv1 Plop. and we're just gonna uh, go into the combiner geometry material override quick load orange grid and there you go so next up, let's set up the global illumination and the fog and everything else. So we'll just uh, go into the file system again, right click, new resource, environment. I'm gonna be creating an environment. Click create, uh, just gonna be calling it env, save. And to see the environment, we'll actually need to add it into our world. So we'll right click on the world, add child node, environment world environment create and for the environment we're going to quick load again and we're going to select our environment awesome now let's double click it here in the file system we're going to change a bunch of settings in here so bear with me for the background i'm using a custom color i'm setting it to pure white that's it for the background uh, for the ambient lines you can leave it as is reflected like can be the background that's fine tone map i'm going to be using uh, filmic yep uh, for the ssao i'm just going to be enabling it because this little red shadow looks nice and then for the global illumination the sdfgi should have picked a better name for that but whatever um, enable it and you can see that beautiful global illumination coming in the light reflecting looks awesome um, this is actually a little too intense for my taste so I'm putting the energy down to 0 0.7 for the volumetric fog we can close this one out glow we don't need fog we don't need volumetric fog enable uh, it's a little harsh right now so I'm going to turn the density down to 0 0.02. I'm also going to be uh, turning the length up to 500. So the end of the grid actually disappears. And last, I'm going to go into adjustments, enable adjustments, and I'm going to be changing the contrast to 1.1 and the saturation to 1.35 just to give a little bit more color to it uh, it's still a little blown out for my taste so I'm gonna go back in the tone map and change it to 
this one, yeah, that's better. All right, next up I'm gonna set up the blur. You don't really need it because the fog is also blurring the background, but just because I wanna show you, it's actually now in uh, world environment itself and it's camera attributes right here. I'm gonna create a new uh, physical camera attributes and here it is, the depth of field. So I'm gonna be enabling far so you get that blur. You can also enable near and then you get the blur when you're really close to things, it also looks nice. All right, that's the scene set up. Let's create the player. So we'll go right click into the file structure create a new scene and call it player. Very important here, you're gonna use another node and you're gonna do character controller 3D or character body 3D. Click it, pick, and you're gonna create a scene. So what we're gonna need for the player is a collision shape. So right click player, add child node, collision shape 3D, click it, create and I'm just going to be using a cylinder and for the height I wanted two meters radius can be a little bit smaller so we'll create like that three five and I'll just con hold down control and drag it up so it's nice and on the origin uh, and next we're gonna go back to player add a child node add a node 3d and this is gonna be our head so double click it, rename it to head. And in transform, I'm gonna set it to 1.7 meters. So that's where our head's gonna be. In the head, in the head, we're gonna create a child node camera. Camera 3D. Perfect. And that's all we need to do for setup for the player. Let's get into the code. And this is really nice about Godot 4 at least for me for some people it might be very annoying but if you add a script to a character body uh, i'm just going to be doing it in the root folder it gives you a template basic movement and it's actually perfect so create this one so as you can see it's already created a lot of code uh, this is just for detecting if it's on the ground jumping if it's on the ground uh, getting the input direction it's using the arrow keys now if we're going to change that and moving the character in the direction it wants so we're not going to be using the arrow keys so going to project settings uh, right here in input map on the top and on add new you're going to type forward backward left and right and then click on the little plus by forward press w backwards s left a and right d all right that's it you can close this and just uh, replace ui left with left ui right with right ui up with forwards and ui down with backwards so now let's go into a world again on the top here go from player to world and we'll just drop in our uh, well actually let's save this scene real quick so control s we call it world that's fine and let's drop in our player so just drag the player scene and drop it into the world so right now the player is going to fall to the ground because the ground doesn't have a collision shape so we're going to go into floor right click add child node static body right there click create Add a child node. Collision shape. Create on the, on the shape here on the top left. It says empty. We're going to create a box. And it's too small. So just click on the box and we'll make it 1000. So 1 and 1000. So now if you play this scene, select current. You can actually see you can already move around so that's great you just can't look yet that's what we're going to add all right close this out go into player 
click on script and let's add some stuff here. I'm actually going to be adding some logic from uh, Garbage's FPS controller. Uh, I'll link it below his video and his code. He made this controller for 4.1, but it was an alpha, so kinematic body no longer works. Uh, move and slide was uh, changed. So I'm just going to be adapting this, but check out this video, it's awesome. We're actually not going to use any of this, uh, just this part. So from the head to the input. Let's just copy this and drop it in. I'll explain what it does. And we're also going to be using the mouse sense right here. So copy this and put it above here. So this is going to be our mouse sensitivity. This is going to be our head node, which is not correct. We didn't use a capital, so we'll just go regular head. And for this, we're also going to retype it. So dollar sign head slash camera 3D. So that's all right. Now, some functions changed in 4.0 stable. For example, degrees to radians is no longer like this. It's degrees underscore two written out radiant and we're just going to copy this and replace it in this line as well in this line as well in this line as well so what this code does uh, in the ready it captures the mouse so it means that uh, you can no longer see the mouse and it's within the window so you can do the first person controlling and within the input we're checking how much the mouse is moving on the x and rotating the character on its y so you can rotate around we're multiplying this by the mouse sense, so you can uh, adjust the sensitivity. We're doing the same thing for the head, but on the x-axis. Again, multiplied by the mouse sensitivity. And last, we're clamping the rotation, which just means the rotation can't go any further than minus 90 or positive 90. So you can't twist off your head. So let's run this now. And as you can see, can look around with your mouse, walk around, jumping works with spacebar, and this is the scene. Now the lighting here is not perfect because you can see uh, it's just this blobby black light, doesn't look very nice, nice, and it's because I forgot to add a sun. So let's stop, go into the world, and on the world we're gonna right click, add mode, directional light 3D. Double click it, and we're just going to use this uh, ball to rotate it down. So we have this nice sun angle. Actually, move it out a little bit. And here on the top right, we're going to click shadow and enable shadow. And now, when you save and you run it, we have this little demo scene with the global illumination, the volumetric fog, and the first person controller. Alright, hope this helped. Uh, yeah, thank you.